and secure and continue, can continue, to make job-creating loans for our factories, our businesses, and home buyers. You know, I do think that there's been too much pessimism. Sound banks should be making sound loans now, and interest rates should be lower now. In addition to these proposals, we must recognize that our economic strength depends on being competitive in world markets. We must continue to expand American exports. A successful Uruguay round of world trade negotiations will create more real jobs and more real growth for all nations. And you and I know that if the playing field is level, America's workers and farmers can outwork, outproduce anyone, anytime, anywhere. And with a Mexican free trade agreement and our Enterprise for the Americas initiative, we can help our partners strengthen their economies and move toward a free trade zone throughout this entire hemisphere. The budget also includes a plan of action right here at home to put more power and opportunity in the hands of the individual. And that means new incentives to create jobs in our inner cities by encouraging investment through enterprise zones. It also means tenant control and ownership of public housing. Freedom and the power to choose should not be the privilege of wealth. They are the birthright of every American. Civil rights are also crucial to protecting equal opportunity. Every one of us has a responsibility to speak out against racism, bigotry, and hate. We We will continue our vigorous enforcement of existing statutes, and I will once again press the Congress to strengthen the laws against employment discrimination without resorting to the use of unfair preferences. We're determined to protect another fundamental civil right. Freedom from crime and the fear that stalks our cities. The Attorney General will soon convene a crime summit of our nation's law enforcement officials. And to help us support them, we need tough crime control legislation and we need it now. And as we fight crime, we will fully implement our national strategy for combating drug abuse. Recent data show that we are making progress, but much remains to be done. We will not rest until the day of the dealer is over forever. Good health care is every American's right and every American's responsibility. And so, we are proposing an aggressive program of new prevention initiatives for infants, for children, for adults, and for the elderly to promote a healthier America and to help keep costs from spiraling.
It's time to give people more choice in government by reviving the ideal of the citizen politician who comes not to stay but to serve. And one of the reasons that there is so much support across this country for term limitations is that the American people are increasingly concerned about big money influence in politics. So we must look beyond the next election to the next generation and the time has come to put the national interest above the special interest and to totally eliminate political action committees. And that would truly put more competition in elections and more power in the hands of individuals. And where power cannot be put directly in the hands of the individual, it should be moved closer to the people away from Washington. The federal government too often treats government programs as if they are of Washington, by Washington, and for Washington. Once established, federal programs seem to become immortal. It's time for a more dynamic program life cycle. Some programs should increase, some should decrease, some should be terminated, and some, and some should be consolidated and turned over to the states. My budget includes a list of programs for potential turnover, totaling more than $20 billion. Working with Congress and the governors, I propose we select at least $15 billion in such programs and turn them over to the states in a single consolidated grant, fully funded for flexible management by the states. The value, the value of this turnover approach is straightforward. It allows the federal government to reduce overhead. It allows states to manage more flexibly and more efficiently. It moves power and decision making closer to the people. And it reinforces a theme of this administration, appreciation and encouragement of the innovative powers of states as laboratories. This nation was founded by leaders who understood that power belongs in the hands of people and they planned for the future and so must we here and all around the world. As Americans we know that there are times when we must step forward and accept our responsibility to lead the world away from the dark chaos of dictators toward the brighter promise of a better day. Almost 50 years ago, we began a long struggle against aggressive totalitarianism. Now, we face another defining hour for America and for the world. There is no one more devoted, more committed to the hard work of freedom than every soldier and sailor, every marine, airman and coast guardsman, every man and woman now serving in the Persian Gulf.